Hello and welcome back to another video uh, for your AP 3D art and design uh, process. Once again, my name is Marty Loftus. Uh, I'll be leading you through demystifying uh, inquiry today. So we're going to be talking a lot about inquiry. We're going to be talking a lot about what that means, uh, how it works inside of your AP 3D sustained investigation. Um, we're going to be looking at both writing as well as the synthesis between the writing. Uh, and the images that students have submitted. So we're going to go through a lot of work that's currently available on the AP website um, and making those connections and talking about the scoring rubric, uh, how that's applied and try to look for some key words, phrases, and ideas inside of that writing that really uh, are going to help you uh, to synthesize these together uh, so that you can get your best possible score on your sustained investigation and AP 3D art and design portfolio. So let's get started. Again, welcome to AP 3D art and design. I'm uh, Marty Loftus. If you didn't tune in to some of the other videos, uh, I teach at Denver School of the Arts in Denver, Colorado. I've been teaching high school visual art for 24 years. I'm an AP reader as well as a table leader. Um, I've been involved with College Board for quite some time and really love teaching uh, 3D art and design. Today we're going to be talking about demystifying the idea of inquiry. Uh, again, if you haven't taken <clears throat> a 3D uh, or a 2D or a drawing uh, AP course in the past, um, this is all new anyways, but if you have taken one of these classes, you'll know that this is a very different exam this year. And a huge part of that is this idea of inquiry. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means, how you can approach inquiry, and we're going to look at a lot of student examples uh, and see how they approach inquiry, how they wrote about inquiry, and what sort of scores they received for their approach to that. So here's our lesson overview for today. In this lesson, you will learn strategies for using inquiry to guide your portfolio work. What are you curious about? What questions can you ask yourself about your materials and your processes? And how are you using inquiry to guide your research? Notice that we used that word guide a couple of times here. Uh, that's such an important part of approaching the idea of inquiry and how that inquiry really should be an integral part of how you approach every work uh, that you do during the course of your sustained investigation. Again, you'll see examples of work that represent different scoring points on the rubric, and we'll talk about why they achieved that score. We'll review uh, the course skills that will be assessed for your sustained investigation, again, as they relate to inquiry specifically for this video. And we'll talk about some best practices to demonstrate inquiry through visual representations as well as in writing. At the conclusion of this lesson, you should be able to identify strong inquiry to guide sustained investigation. And you should also be able to identify visual evidence that demonstrates a sustained investigation that closely relates to a stated inquiry. So as we talked about even in our first couple of lessons, so much of what we're doing here with inquiry inside of the sustained investigation is this connection. The connection between the inquiry, the connection between your individual works, the connection between your processes, your materials, your ideas, and the connection between your written evidence as well as the visual evidence. So what you need to know. We've talked about this again in the first couple of videos, but again, if you haven't looked at that, there are some important updates to what you're going to be submitting this year for your AP portfolio. Again, selected works is no longer going to be five works, but three, and your sustained investigation is gonna be, be comprised of 10 images as opposed to 15. Again, with selected works, that's three works, but that will be six images. Remember, for each work that you submit in Selected Works, you need two images of each of those pieces. One full image of that 3D work, and one that either shows a different vantage point or perspective, or a detail to show texture uh, and additional information. And again, for sustained investigation, you're now limited. 
So while some students, this might be something that can be celebrated, for some of you, this might become more of a challenge to compact all of this information that you've done for your sustained investigation into only 10 images. And again, uh, the portfolio due date uh, has been extended as well for uh, this AP 3D design portfolio. So uh, the extended due date uh, will be due on May 26th at 11.59 Eastern, 11.59 p.m. So let's take a brief look at the course skills. Again, we're really focusing here on inquiry and investigation. So these are things that you should have been talking about and exploring from the very, very beginnings of this year and your foray into AP 3D art and design. So initially, you probably hopefully generated possibilities for your investigation. You're gonna describe how inquiry guides investigation through art and design, describe how materials, processes, and ideas in art and design relate to context, interpret works of art and design based on materials, processes, and ideas used, and investigate materials, processes, and ideas as well. So, what is inquiry? Inquiry is the process of asking questions in order to seek, to search, and to discover. I really like this very succinct definition of what inquiry is. And if we think about what we do with most visual art, in fact, strong visual art, um, we are asking questions. We're trying to seek, we're trying to search, we're trying to discover, we're creating things uh, that are new and maybe not necessarily new to everyone, but these are certainly new ideas and processes uh, for us. And that's how we investigate something and that's how we grow and create things that wind up becoming new. For AP course skills, and this is where we are gonna talk a little bit about how you're going to be scored when it comes to uh, inquiry. So let's just talk a little bit about what these all mean. Uh, the written evidence are the actual written components that accompany the students' works of art and design. So remember, you're doing this inquiry statement at the very beginning that's gonna be a little bit more lengthy, and you'll have an opportunity to very briefly describe each one of these pieces in smaller amounts of text so this does give you the opportunity to, uh, again, connect each individual piece uh, to each other and to that larger piece of writing, that larger piece of inquiry. The visual evidence are those visual components that make up the student's work of art and design. So these are the actual physical pieces that you've created uh, that you're gonna be uploading photos of to the AP website. When we talk about relates, it's having relationships and or connections between. So again, you can look at that from multiple perspectives. That might be the relationships and connections between each one of the works. That might be the relationships that those works have to the inquiry and to that inquiry statement. To identify, to show, suggest, or point out, and guides. And again, this is such an important word that we're going to be coming back to. It's the inquiry leads the process of making works of art and design. So all the works that you've done during the course of this year, during the course of this uh, sustained investigation, that inquiry has been the driving force behind each of the works that you've created. And it's important, once again, to make those connections visually and for the readers to be able to read and understand all of those connections. So if we look at inquiry specifically, we're going to look at three different scoring points. And I am going to walk through these very quickly because we're going to look at examples of uh, sustained investigations uh, that relate to each one of these scoring points on the rubric. So scoring point one uh, is written evidence identifies as inquiry, but the visual evidence does not relate to that inquiry. So again, we see a lack of connection between those two, or written evidence does not identify an inquiry. And we might see examples of that too, where we really don't see a true inquiry that's designed uh, through that written evidence. For a scoring in the rubric point two, written evidence identifies an inquiry that relates to an, a sustained investigation, and visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation as well. 
So we start to see a connection between the written work and the physical work here. In scoring rubric point three, written evidence identifies an inquiry that guides the sustained investigation and the visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation. And this comes back to the point that I made earlier. It's just not that the two things uh, relate to each other, but we can see that that inquiry statement from the very beginning was the driving force behind each of those pieces that were submitted in that specific portfolio. So let's take a look at a few scoring examples and scoring commentaries. When you get your scores from AP, you won't receive that kind of feedback. Um, we simply have too many uh, portfolios to look at. But they do a great job of uploading these examples to their website so that you can see and get some context in terms of what some other students had done and why they achieved those scores. So let's look at a few of those. Once again, this is the homepage uh, for College Board AP. And if this is where you're starting out, this is the easiest URL to see. This is the AP Central at uh, collegeboard.org. Go under AP Courses and Exams, Course and Exam Pages, and scroll down here very close to the top to AP 3D Art and Design. Again, if you haven't started your upload yet, um, please make sure that you are communicating with your teacher and or administrator. Right here where it says sign into AP Classroom, this is where all students will be able to enter their username and password and start to upload their statements, their commentaries, as well as their physical images uh, that you're gonna be submitting for your AP portfolio. What we wanna focus on here today though, is again gonna be under the portfolio section. So if I click here, you're gonna have a lot of resources as they pertain uh, specifically to the A3D art and design portfolio. This includes uh, due dates, um, rubric points, and everything that needs to be included in your portfolio. However, if you scroll down, this is where again, we're gonna focus on today. 3D sustained investigation samples and scoring commentaries. So as we click here, we're actually gonna be looking at about eight different examples um, of inquiry today. And again, we're really just gonna focus on the inquiry part and not the other parts of the scoring rubric. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the work itself, the written portion and those connections. So we're gonna see a wide range of works done by students uh, from around the country. Um, that again, have very, very different context, ideas, resources, materials, et cetera. So we're gonna scroll through each one of these uh, portfolios and pieces without any written context to begin with. Uh, I've done that both ways with students. I think they both have value, but try to start to figure out what each one of these students is trying to investigate, what that inquiry might be as we look through the images before we actually get to see what they uh, have uh, inquired about. So here are pieces number one and two. Images number three and four. Images number five and six. Notice this connection of multiple images inside of one and also the integration of some great process work as well. Images seven and eight, <clears throat> nine and 10. And again, to give it context, remember, this will be the limitations of this year's upload for the AP uh, sustained investigation. In the future, it will be 15. Numbers 11 and 12, 13, 14 and 15. So <clears throat> let's look a little bit at uh, the student's written evidence. Um, obviously you can come back and read a, a lot of this on your own. I'm just gonna focus on the first part and then I really wanna put more focus on the rationale for each one of these scoring points. So for this body of work, it explores emotional allegory to the intimacy of a landscape. In these textual paintings, I memorialize the tense and duplicitous 
qualities of youth and transition through a literal dissection of space by manipulating my drawings, patterns, and paintings like my use of pomegranate dyes, pen or gouache experiments, and additional tactile practices. I instill textual references and create a dichotomy within the masses. Now, that's a lot. Clearly, this student can write extremely well, but there are a couple things that I just want to focus on that are a little bit more simple that I think uh, are key talking points as you start to write your inquiry, if you have not already, or as you revise that as you approach our AP deadline. So certain key words I want you to look at here. Explores, right? We already get the idea of an investigation, right? To investigate and to explore. When she continues on through this, um, this idea of manipulation, right? So we've got experimentation here. We look at the idea of experimentation here as well. So these practices, this experimentation, this exploration, this student is actually talking about all those things in the very first part. So the AP reader clearly understands that the student is, uh, is understanding what uh, an inquiry is and how that's going to drive uh, this throughout her process. So let's click out of here and look down at the scoring commentary. So again, we're really only looking at row A, which is inquiry, and this did score a three. This is exceptional work. So the student statement describes the body of work as an exploration of emotional allegory to the intimacy of a landscape. Built from 2D drawings, patterns, and paintings that have been combined to create 3D paintings, the artist describes as quilt-like forms. The written statement, the artist notes that the 2D elements are their own earlier uh, drawings and paintings. The process of turning them into three-dimensional works allows them to take on new meaning. So when viewing the portfolio, it becomes obvious that these were sculptural works are indeed composed of drawings, patterns, et cetera, um, that can be viewed in the round. Uh, the exploration of materials and process reflects the exploration of landscape and identity as uh, the work in this portfolio. So again, really strong work, and I think the student does a great job in the very beginning of talking about this being an exploration of uh, experimenting and of practices. So start thinking about some of those key words and phrases where readers can pick up on those quickly and understand uh, that you as the student really understood this from the beginning and that the work that you're going to be showing is driven by the idea of that exploration. Let's look at number two. Again, right now, no context. Let's start to think about what the student might be trying to investigate or inquire about as we look at these works. These are work number one and two. Three and four. five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12, 13, 14, and 15. So here's the point in my classroom where I would ask my students to score this portfolio. Um, for this part, we wouldn't be able to do that because we haven't uh, read the uh, inquiry statement yet. But in terms of the other parts of the rubric, um, 3D art and design principles, things like that, we would easily be able to come up with a score. So think about that as we scroll down and see what the students scored. Let's first look at what this portfolio is inquiring about. So one of the things I want you to think about here as you move forward, and again, these are examples from our legacy exam. So these were submitted last year. Um, we no longer really refer to this as a concentration. And I think that's important to think about as you go through this. A concentration is different from an inquiry. And I want you to think about what that means. How is the idea of concentration as opposed to a sustained investigation different? So I think in a lot of ways, it really relates to that idea of, is there just a connection between them? Or was that statement and that inquiry, that driving force behind the creation of these works? So this concentration, or as we would call it now, sustained investigation was in response to the school's dress code. 
And in order to capture these rules, I decided to create a collection of exaggerated garments that respect the rules. Each piece corresponds to one of the school dress coats. For my collection, I wanted the garments to be interpreted in a non-serious way, but also portray the message that the dress code is unnecessary and more restricting uh, towards girls. So there really is a lot going on here um, with these works, as opposed to just looking at the works in and of themselves. So let's see what they said about this existing investigation. So this also scored a three. Uh, but let's talk about the why. In the written evidence, the student indicates that this body of work was created in response to the school's dress code. The student created a six-piece collection of garments, but also expresses that the dress code is unnecessary. The student additionally describes the choices. So that's so important, right? The choices that were deliberately made. These are such key scoring descriptors. Made to further the investigation. For example, I limited myself to black and white textiles to underscore the inflexibility of the dress code. Now, some of this is going to be put into the second part of that statement, which is up here. But some of these might be addressed in those very small boxes underneath each individual work. Um, these works were guided by the idea and reflect a true visual inquiry into the limitations and potential of the school's dress code. So once again, the idea of guided and reflecting, these things are key words and scoring descriptors as we look through that. So again, as you write through this, really think about what was that driving force behind what you created for your portfolio. Sample number three, images one and two. Number three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Nine and 10. 11 and 12. 13, 14. And number 15. So some of these are gonna be a little bit more challenging. And for those students who are really thinking conceptually, you really need to be able to write. You really need to be able to convey these ideas in a written form because there's so much going on here. And I think we can tell, but it's really difficult to understand without a very clear, clear statement of inquiry. So for these works, the central idea of this, again, concentration or sustained investigation is the limitation and possibility of language. This idea is grounded by my experience of speaking English and Vietnamese in the US and in Vietnam. My personal experience of miscommunication prompts me to ask, how can I employ miscommunication as a tactic to break apart the rigidity of language? How can I find alternative ways to communicate beyond spoken language? And how can I utilize language to my advantage? It really is important once you've written that statement, and for those of us who are looking at it, have read that statement, to go back. If we look at these images now, with that sense of context, do these images become much more strong? Do we understand what's going on here a little bit more clearly? I would argue absolutely. However, each one of these is so specific, it seems, and so nuanced that again, it's super important that we really talk about the individual works in the second part so we understand how each one of these relates to that central inquiry and how they relate to each other. This is another portfolio that has scored a three. Once again, the idea that the student writes that this is about the limitation and possibility of language, this area of inquiry is clearly, clearly reflected in the accompanying body of work in which the student has used prompts to engage students in the interactions that challenge the limits of language-based communication. Sound and physical actions are elements that the student has used to define and activate 3D space. And this exploration largely centered on performance-oriented events in which the artist guided the interactions of participants is thoroughly and effectively documented. 
So again, when you're not dealing with actual physical objects, when we're dealing with something that might be more performative or action-based, it's so important that that work is documented. And again, not just documented visually, although that's such a huge component with something like this, but also documented uh, in those written descriptions of those individual works. Sample four, images one and two. three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12, 13, 14, and 15. Again, these are all available on the AP website. You can take a much closer look at these later if you would like. The central idea of this student's concentration or sustained investigation is their friends. They motivate, make, motivate me to create work that is true to who I am. Religion is a major theme in my installation pieces and is something I struggle with in my life. My search has to do with understanding religion and how each haunting photo helps me figure out what it means to me. We have another very high scoring portfolio here as a three. In the written evidence, the artist first identifies the central idea of the sustained investigation as my friends, but then goes on to discuss themes of understanding religion and the idea of home. So this does become important. An investigation simply based on my friends uh, can be pretty broad and can be in some ways trite. We've seen a lot of students approach that. But again, delving deeper into those ideas of understanding religion and the idea of home really gives us uh, a, much, a much more substantial amount of information uh, to get here. Uh, the work represented in this portfolio includes imagery that, and approaches that relate to and merge all of these ideas. Again, it's that idea of connectivity, right? And the idea that that first statement has driven all of these images. I encourage you to go back through these and look at these a little bit more closely when we're finished. I would like to go a few more, but hopefully this is something that can drive you to come back to these images, to look at the rest of them, uh, and to make some connections of your own between the statements, uh, the ideas, the processes, materials, the writing, and the visual imagery. So for sample number five, we have a student working with clay, images one and two three and four, five and six, seven, eight, nine and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So this student uh, has been looking at uh, being focused on capturing the expression of my subjects to convey a feeling for the viewer, and for the figures, I use gesture to help convey a narrative as well as emotion. You'll notice that, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, there isn't a lot of information that we have um, right now in this student written evidence. We have one sentence to begin, and there isn't a lot of supporting evidence down here at the bottom as they talk about uh, just a few individual pieces and how they relate. Remember, the written evidence that you're putting in here shouldn't be seen as something that's uh, a pain. This is something that's really there as an opportunity for you to really talk about how you've uh, investigated this inquiry. So take full advantage of that. Really look at how you can talk about each one of these pieces as this is now something that's being scored. So we have a little bit lower score on this one with a score of two. In this portfolio, the student states that the focus of the artwork is capturing the expression of my subjects to convey a feeling in a viewer. In a few of these, specifically three, six, and nine, they demonstrate the development of three-dimensional portraiture with an emphasis on expression, and thus visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation. They additionally state that the figures uh, they used gesture to convey a narrative as well. And they go on to say that some of these do that, but visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation of expression and a narrative in a three-dimensional portrait of and figurative work. While the written evidence corresponds to the visual evidence of the work itself, in neither space is a true guiding inquiry identified. 
there is little evidence in writing or in the work of an ongoing investigation or exploration of the ways that sculptural techniques might may be effectively used to convey emotion or a narrative. Similarly, the inquiry does not become deeper or more, more focused over time. It's unclear what the student is truly pursuing. So again, I think the work that you see in here is actually really very strong, but there's a lack of understanding on the reader's part because there just probably isn't enough information given in the written evidence. So when you, again, come back to this part, really think about that as an opportunity to talk about not just the central idea of your inquiry, but about how each one of these pieces was driven by that inquiry. So we're gonna look at just one more set of examples here, um, and then you can always come back and look at a few more of these. Sample number six, images number one and two. Number three, four, five, six and seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So the idea of this concentration or sustained investigation was to use a variety of materials cut into different shapes and add a new and different levels to my unique bases. My concentration was an idea that came to be through my interest in the different levels and different points of view that are made when you add different materials and pieces on top of each other. So this actually scored a one. Um, and let's talk a little bit about why, because there's some interesting work going on up top if we just look at the images. The written evidence identifies the process of creating this work, but not the inquiry that guided it. The stated idea is to use a variety of materials cut into different shapes and add new and different levels to my unique bases. The student comes close to identifying an inquiry in the next sentence, where there is a description of an interest in the different levels and different points of view that are made when you add different materials and pieces on top of each other. With a little bit more description, this could be read as an inquiry into methods for exploring ways of creating depth and wall-mounted sculpture. As it is presented here, though, the student is not expressing what it is about the act of layering things that is interesting or what they hope to pursue, express, or understand through this process of layering. I think this is maybe the most important uh, body of work that we look at today and that we really are looking at some really interesting work. However, the way that they've described this in their written portion really doesn't talk about the idea of this being an inquiry. It really just talks about this as a process. So again, as you come back, and part of this idea of revision isn't just in revising your artwork, it's also an idea of revising uh, your statements. Think about how you can use some of the verbiage that we saw earlier with some of these portfolios and how they use that verbiage and that writing section to propose a true inquiry uh, for their sustained investigation. So really look at those, look at some of those keywords and phrases. I think they're gonna help you uh, a lot to develop something that's gonna be more cohesive and to give readers a true idea of what your inquiry is and how your visual art relates to that inquiry. So some things to think about as you continue moving on through your AP portfolio. Um, Let's come back to our PowerPoint here for just a couple last slides and to debrief what we've talked about here today. So once again, please make sure that you can log into your AP classroom. Um, don't wait on that. Um, that deadline has been extended, but with two months to go, that really isn't a tremendous amount of time. Uh, and you may wind up with some issues with uploads later on. We're gonna do a set of uh, videos uh, later um, probably next week where we talk a little bit more about the AP upload process and give you some best practices to help you along with that as well. Please take some time to read through your current student written evidence, your statement. Does this evidence guide your sustained investigation or does it simply relate to the work that you've done? Does the visual evidence support the written section? This section really is all about making those connections between the inquiry and the work that you've created. 
think carefully about how that inquiry drove your decision making with each of your pieces and how that essential question helped to drive the production of those pieces. As we've mentioned previously, we do know that not all students have access to the internet or a device. We're working on solutions to help students get what they need to show their best work. If you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, uh, please have them reach out or you can reach out to us directly to let us know. That's at cb.org slash tech. So once again, everyone, um, thank you for watching. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We wish you the very best of luck as you continue working on the completion of your AP 3D portfolios. Uh, please tune into some of our uh, other videos. It'll be coming up in the near future. Uh, once again, thank you and um, we'll see you soon.